Hey Axel, what's half of five and one eight? <laughs> so uh, we're down here at Bob's again, uh, over here at uh, Cowley, Cowley College, right? Mm -hmm. I said it wrong earlier. In uh, Bob Moffat's uh, training room here, I'll wind up cutting some circles. And, but this is like the bee's knees right here, and I can't wait for him to show us this here. <laughs> We're getting ready to cut a circle, but we got to lay it out. We got to know half of something, yeah, right? Yeah. We're working with the math out here all the time. So sure. we're going to do a simple three inch circle. Actually, we want it just a little bit bigger than three inch. I don't know, they got to be a three inch pipe around here. But we want it like a corner to corner fit. So, for example, this is a piece of two and a half inch pipe. Okay? We know that this is two and a half. And when I measure something like this, I'll even come in here and like, I call it burning an inch. I want to be accurate. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hook this thing because, you know, it's okay for quick stuff, but that doesn't really get me accurate. Sure. Okay, so I want half of this wall thickness. I'll come in here and read it to 10, and I want to be, that says that I'm a 16th into this. Actually, it says this is what? This is 3 16th wall thickness. Well, if I want to make a general corner to corner fit, then I come in here at 332, and then I come over here, and it's like what? It's like two and a half, and there's two and five eighths, and not quite to 11 sixteenths, but if I go two and five eighths heavy, then I'm corner to corner. So let's cut that. Let's, let's lay out for two and five eighths. Okay. Well, what's half of that? Half of that is uh, inch and uh, three six, no, inch and uh, five sixteenths. Five sixteenths, okay. Right. So we go inch and five sixteenths. You had me on that one. And uh, what's the decimal equivalency of five sixteenths? <laughs> that one I don't know. Point three one two five. <laughs> three one two five. So we'll make a reference mark. Actually, we'll come in over here and go, uh, well, let's just cut this thing. Let's just go in the middle. We're six inches. So we're going to go uh, three. Okay. I like to make gentle look, marks look in at here. Look arrow there, Scott. You know, if you come in here and be accurate, I like to, you see that's dull kind of, but you can still come in here and make a gentle mark, a, a little crow's foot. Well, that crow's foot is pointing right at that line. Mm -hmm. That line is not very wide. You, mm -hmm. That's called discrimination. Yes. Okay, and the other thing is you need to be, you know, at 90 degrees. If I'm marking it out over here, I've got an angular problem here and I can't be that accurate. Mm -hmm. So, and then beyond that, uh, we have scribes. You know, what's a scribe? Scratcher. Well, man, you can really rip a good sharp line in there, you know, if you're doing it. If you're laying out bolt holes and, uh, let me get over here, there we go. If you're laying out bolt holes and stuff for centers and you got to do a bunch of drilling, you might want to. You might want to start using the scribe, so, and then you can come in and center punch that. So we do this, and what would you say, inch and five sixteenths or so. Mm -hmm. I've got a bevel on here. I'm not. I don't even want to be around it, so I'm going to burn an inch. I'll come in here and do this, and I'm a quarter inch away from it because I want good material in my in my circle. And we said what five sixteenths? Mm -hmm. Okay, so from three. I need to mark that because we're going to use that as a reference. Uh, we want our line out to that point. We want this into 5 sixteenths. 5 sixteenths falls right here. We got an eighth, a quarter, a sixteenth, 5 sixteenths. Okay, and that's where we need to pop a center punch mark. Mm -hmm. We don't always have to lay out the full circle. If you have a bunch of them, mm -hmm. Mark out one and set your guide, if you're gonna use a guide. And then from there, I would do this again and lay this rascal down and leave him alone. And then I would come in and set my compass on a inch mark and I would adjust it back in until it got to the 5 16th. And at that point, I'd say, Dang it, Frank, how come you didn't go sharpen this up first, <laughs> man? Mm. 
We said five sixteenths, did we not? Yes, we did. Well, I'd trust that to be five sixteenths. Okay. And then I would come and mark this out. So I'll make this guy here with I got I got a small nut on one end and a big nut on the other end for the other size torch. I just reversed these. I bought these I bought a bunch of these a long time ago. I've seen them made out of electrical parts, electrical kerning, you know. Mm-hmm. Putting and then I I'd come in here and I would adjust this one time. Now, see what's happening here is I'm not level. I'm not straight here. If I, and I'd probably add something on here later on. I'd go back here and do a V where this thing sets straight. But for me right now, I just, I'll just hold on to it like that. We're only cutting a quarter of an inch. It's not gonna be that much of a bevel. And sometimes it's an advantage. But I come in here and do this, but I have to be careful. See how much slop there is in there? I gotta be careful of that. And then I gotta be careful of this too. I don't remember what I was cutting last time. Obviously not using this size torch, but I need to drop this down because my coupling height is not correct. I'm getting there, I'm getting better. So I would retighten this because that looks correct to me. And then I would mess with this some more, but what I need to be careful of is this, how much I'm rocking it. Now, gently snug that guy up. We'll take this over and uh, I like to set him on a piece of pot, cut that board, cut through that pot. Pause. I don't want to cut it down on the floor. I do not want to cut into something else, but more importantly, I like to be above it so I have freedom of movement. My freedom of movement allows me to do a single cut all the way around. Ready? Yeah. Go. Back up. Give it a nice light, mate. Thank you. Yeah. Way to go, Governor. Same thing, same neutral flame. Same everything, except I got a problem here. I got a, I got a pierce. I got to poke a hole. Yeah. If it's not critical, if it is critical, I would do something like this. I would start inside here and come out. So what I normally do, I uh, used to do this a lot, cutting tube sheets, like for boil, you know what I'm talking about, the tube sheet thing, got a lot of holes in there. But I, uh, I get the up here, and then I get somewhere where I can get fairly comfortable. Stick that guy in there, and then I get completely upside down wrapped up. See what I mean? Yep. Okay, when I start, I go away from me. It's just like on a piece of pipe. It's like a, re a reverse roll or something, but I'll pierce this. See that mill scale popping up off there? You gotta walk it out. You gotta do a little two step. Come around here. Boom, you done. And we have labored to produce a biscuit of poison. It's got a little bit of slag on it, but it's a fairly clean cut. Yeah. That's probably hot. 